In module 6.4, we are going to be introducing the concept of relational algebra and discussing the eight operations in relational algebra. There are two unary operators and six binary operators. Describing the difference in our two unary operators of select and project, we're going to be talking about our three set theory operators, union, intersection, and difference, and also the natural join. In this module, we are going to be uh, introduced to a little bit of basic SQL code that we're going to be expanding on throughout the rest of the semester. So let's go ahead and get started. Relational algebra is simply a way that lets us talk about relations and data in an abstract manner without really getting caught up in the details of what the data is about, right? And this is kind of like how regular algebra lets us abstractly talk about numbers without getting bogged down in the numbers themselves. So we substitute symbols to represent data and do abstract calculations just like we do in regular algebra. So for example, we might say the area of a room is the length times the width. And then we can plug in any values for length and width to uh, do this calculation. So if the length is 10 and the width is 20, we would say the area is L times W, which is 10 times 20. So the area of the room is 200. And then if we wanted to find a room that is four times as large, we can nest our equation. So we could say four times A, which is the equivalent to four times in parentheses, lengths times width, which is four times in parentheses, 10 times 20 or four times 200 is 800. So this allows us to create formulas for interacting with numbers without worrying so much about what the numbers themselves are. So applying this to databases, instead of thinking of relations as uh, having names like student or course or professor, we're just going to give them generic names like R. And instead of talking about our individual attributes like PeopleSoft ID, first name, last name, and phone number, we're just going to call our attributes like A1, A2, A3, and so on. So our relation schema is generically going to be R and then in parens A sub one, A sub two, A sub three, and so on until we've captured all of our attributes. Taking this one step further, our attribute is defined as an order set in D where N is the name of the attribute and D is the domain of the attributes. And then further, our set of attributes can be represented as a vector C, right? So C is this set, and we have the set wrapped in curly braces of N sub one, D sub one, and N sub two, D sub two. So the name and domain of each attribute. So our relation is a set R comma C, where R is the name of the relation, and then C is the list of attributes that make up the relation. And our database is going to have multiple relations, right? So each relation RC is equivalent to uh, the relation with, which is made up of all these attributes, which is equivalent to the relation, which is this set of names and domains of attributes. So this is really just representing a generic relation, which might be something like student and student is made up of a set of attributes, which are something like name and then the domain of all of the names in the relation and phone number and the domain of all of the values of phone number in the relation and so on. Okay, so this is just an abstract representation of our data. So now that we've seen how we can represent our relations and our attributes using relational algebra notation, we're going to talk about the operations that we can then perform on these relations. And we have eight basic relational algebra functions, two of which are unary, meaning that they impact only one relation. This is our selection and projection operations. And then we have six binary operations, which mean that they interact with two relations at a time. Three of these are our set theory operations of union, intersection, and difference. We have the join operation, which has several sub operations that are inner joins or outer joins, the Cartesian product and division. So right now we're going to talk about union, intersection, difference, and join, and then we'll talk more about the Cartesian product and division a little bit later. So for these upcoming examples, let's imagine we have these three relations, AW plant, which are plants that are award winning, Texas plants, which are plants that are in Texas, and then projects, which are projects that might be undertaken by plants. 
So we're going to start by looking at our two unary operations of selection, which returns a subset of tuples based on some criteria, and projection, which returns a subset of attributes that we are interested in seeing the values of. So our select operator selects a horizontal subset of tuples that satisfies some selection condition from the relation. And in relational algebra, we write select by using this lowercase sigma, and then the condition on which we are selecting tuples, and then the name of our relation. And this selection con condition is a Boolean expression which is going to evaluate to either true or false for every tuple in the relation. Imagine we wanted to answer the question based on this AW plant table, which award-winning plants have a budget over $2 million? So our relational algebra would look like this. We start with the lowercase sigma, and then in a subscript, we have our condition here, aw underscore plant underscore budget greater than 2 million from the relation aw plant. And the SQL that's equivalent to this, and we're gonna go into more depth on the SQL code a little bit later in the semester, would be to say select asterisk, which represents all attri attributes from aw plant where this Boolean condition, AWPL budget, is greater than 2 million. And so that's going to take this source relation and create a new relation containing just the tuples where this condition evaluates to true. So for the first tuple, uh, 2,500,000 is greater than 2 million, so that evaluates to true. 1,930,000 is not greater than 2 million, so this for this tuple, that condition evaluates to false and this tuple would not be returned. So we're only getting the tuples where this Boolean expression evaluates to true. And this results in a new relation containing only the tuples where this expression evaluates to true. So that's our selection operation. Our projection operator returns a vertical subset of attributes that we're interested in from the relation. So we use the lowercase pi to represent projection in our relational algebra. And then in subscript, the list of attributes we want to return, and then the name of the relation we are projecting from. So in this case, if we wanted to answer this question, what is the plant number and budget for each award-winning plant? We would just project the two attributes, aw plant number and aw plant budget, from the relation aw plant. And the SQL that goes along with this relational algebra expression would be select aw plant number, aw plant budget from aw plant. And so that's going to take our source relation and only return these two attributes that we're interested in, not returning the plant name. Now, as we'll come to find out in future lectures, we can actually nest many of these relational algebra expressions together, and we can both select and project and join and do other things all at the same time to create more complex and more interesting queries. So that's it for our two unary operators of selection and projection. Next up, we're going to talk about some binary operators. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking about our three set theory operators, union, intersection, and difference, and talking just a little bit about joins. And we're going to come back and look at the Cartesian product and division a little bit later. So in order to use any of our three set theory operators, the two relations must be union compatible. And what union compatible means is that the two relations have the same degree or the same number of attributes, and each pair of attributes from the two relations are in the same domain. And even though it's union compatibility, it is a requirement for all three of our set theory operators, union, intersection, and difference. So let's start by looking at union. Union is going to create a third relation containing tuples from either relation. And again, these two relations have to be union compatible. So if we add the two relations, AW plant and Texas plant, and we wanted to say what plants are either in Texas or are award-winning plants, this would be the union of AW plant and Texas plant. 
And the symbol we use to represent union in relational algebra is this, uh, it looks a lot like a U, but it is a special symbol that's a little bit more stretched out. So this is the relational algebra representation of the union of these two relations. And we would write the sequel by saying select asterisk from AW plant union select asterisk from TX plant. And so this is going to give us all of the attributes that are in either AW plant or in Texas plant. The next set theory operator we're going to look at is intersection, which creates a third relation containing tuples that are present in both of the relations. So union was either relation, intersection is both relations. So this is kind of like saying you're in one relation and you're in the other relation. So this is answering the question, what plants are in Texas and are award-winning plants? So the relational algebra looks like this, AW plant, and then this upside down U looking symbol is how we represent intersection and relational algebra, Texas plant. And the sequel that corresponds to this relational algebra would be select asterisk from AW plant intersect select asterisk from TX plant. So we're looking for tuples that are in both AW plant and Texas plant. And let's see, Southern Oaks, River Oaks, Kingwood, it looks like River Oaks is the only tuple that is present in both of these relations. So that is what's going to be at the intersection of these two relations. Our third set theory operator that we're going to be looking at is the difference. And this is going to create a third relation containing tuples present in one relation, but not the other relation. And we can do this in either direction. We could say something like, what plants are in Texas, but are not award-winning? And the relational algebra looks like this, Texas plant minus AW plant, or the sequel, we would say select asterisk from Texas plant minus select asterisk from AW plant. So this is gonna find plants that are in the Texas relation, but not the AW plant relation. So we would find Southern Oaks and Kingwood to be in the resulting relation. And in the other direction, what plants are award-winning but are not in Texas? And this is just AW plant minus Texas plant, or the sequel, select asterisk from AW plant minus select asterisk from TX plant. And we are going to find Black Horse, Maid Creek, Whitefield, Kings Island, and Ashton. So all of our plants except the River Oaks plant, which was in the Texas plant relation. Now on to the final binary operator that we're going to be looking at in this lecture, the natural join. The natural join combines two relations into a third by matching values that come from the same domain for attributes in the two relation. And this is directly related to the idea of foreign keys that we talked about earlier in this lecture. So we have a foreign key relationship between projects and the plants that undertake these projects. And in this project table, this project AW plant number is a foreign key that refers to the AW plant number attribute in the AW plant relation. Okay, so of course, all of the values in this foreign key must be in the domain of values of the Kennedy key to which it is referring. Okay, so now what we're looking to do here is bring back all of the attributes about the project and the plant that undertakes that project. Okay, so our SQL is going to look like this, and there's a couple of different ways we could write this. One would be to say select asterisk from AW plant, natural join Texas plant, or a way that's going to give us a little bit more flexibility, and we'll talk about more of these details in a future lecture, would be to say something like select asterisk from AW plant, inner join Texas plant on AWPL number equals project AWPL number. Okay, and so this is going to create a new relation with attributes from both of these relations where the value of the foreign key is equal to the value of this Kennedy key. So since solar heating is uh, at plant 11, which is black horse, we have a relation that has all of the attributes from projects, solar heating, project 41 in Sealy, which is at plant 11, which is black horse and has a budget of 2.5 million and lunar cooling, which is project 17 at Yoakum, which is plant 17, uh, which is at River Oaks and has a budget of 1.93 million and so forth and so on. 
And one thing that I would point out here is that even though we do see some values being duplicated, this is actually not considered data redundancy because we're not storing this uh, value of River Oaks multiple times, and we're not storing this value of Kings Island multiple times. This is really only stored once in the AW plant table. And when we do this join, the resulting relation is just what's stored in memory and presented to the user or the application as a view of the data. Okay, so uh, this repetition of these values is perfectly fine in this context. But we'll be talking about this in much greater detail in future lectures. All right, so in module 6.4, we talked about the eight operations in relational algebra, our two unary operators of selection and projection, and our six binary operations, uh, three of which are our set theory operators of union, intersection, and difference, as well as join, division, and the Cartesian product. We said select returns a subset of tuples that match some criteria and project returns a subset of attributes that we are interested in seeing. As far as our set theory operators, union is the equivalent to or, so we want all tuples that are in either relation. Uh, intersection is the equivalent to and, where we want tuples that are in both relations. And difference is going to return tuples that are in one relation but not the other. And as we previously mentioned, in order to use any of our set theory operators, the two relations do have to be union compatible, which means they have the same number of attributes and the pairs of attributes are from the same domain. And then finally, the natural join is how we bring uh, tuples in relations together based on some common value of attributes we specify. And this is really operationalized as a foreign key in one relation matching the candidate key in the other relation to which it refers.